Hello, All of Us family. Welcome to All of Us. My name is Rachel Wade. I'm the chief encourager and founder here at All of Us. Welcome to season six again. And this time I promised you I would not be alone for the rest of the season. If you listened to episode 52, I was by myself for the very first time rolling out the new season, talking about the new All of Us Restored retreats that are in person uh, coming spring 2025. And here today we have a very uh, amazing woman, friend, all of us, sister, Gina Holiday. Uh, Gina, welcome to all of us again. <laughs> How are you today? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy to be here. Yes. Well, Gina, if you are looking back at the episodes, was episode 26. Uh, we talked about her her baby, her her company, uh, Spoonful of Faith, and we talked just about creativity then. And I thought, I have got to have her back. Uh, for the new season for a couple of reasons. And that is, uh, today's episode is called All of Us Delight. Now, I mentioned in the last episode that we were going to have a different season uh, this time around because we were going to explore the four tenets of All of Us Restored. Uh, that is rest, delight, connect, and grow. And so today, this episode, All of Us Delight, Gina will be kind of unpacking uh, delight, how what it is to her, how she defines it, and talk about her new book. So first things first, Gina, will you just introduce yourself to everybody in the event that this is the first time that they've uh, gotten to know you? I don't know how that would be possible, uh, but uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so my name is Gina Holiday. I am a mom of two. I'm a wife. I've been married for 10 years to my husband. Um, 10, 10 year old and an eight year old. We live in Minnesota. Um, I am an artist and creative. I run a business called Spoonful of Faith um, that focuses on creating artwork and illustrations that bring joy, hope, um, and just encouragement to the heart. So um, I started that about 10 years ago now. It's crazy. Oh, <laughs> wow. 10 years. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and so, um, my work, um, like I said, I share through my business, through products that um, really focus on women, encouraging women's hearts and things that they can just take with them on their every day. Mm -hmm. um, I've worked with a lot of brands and had my work in retail stores and all of these amazing things just by um, really stepping out and trusting God with my creativity. And so that is a little bit about me and my story. Mm -hmm. Can't believe it's been 10 years. That's amazing. Uh, that's <laughs> oh, in itself to have anything. I feel like for like oh, more than two years, it's like, I don't know. Uh, but that yeah. consistency and you just continuing to show up and use the gifts that God has deposited in you. It is I know for me and so many, like incredibly encouraging to see you continue to just use what God put in you, um, which is a lot of what your book is about, which we'll talk about yeah. in a second. Um, <laughs> but I love your work and I, I want to all, always say this publicly. Um, I love your work. I love um, your, the eye that God has given you as a creator. Um, there's a lot, as we all know, there's a lot of illustrators and artwork and just beauty out there. Uh, but there's only one you and there's only right. one Gina that creates the way you do. And so, um, you know, I, I have the journals, you know, it, I've bought the, I've right. bought the merch. I, I'm, I have a nice closet, which is hilarious because this morning I yeah. take something else and I had your sweatshirt on and I went to go put it on this morning. I'm like, you already wore that this week. I'm like, <laughs> it's in the dirty clothes. Not right. so so cool. I'm like, no, we're just going to go all of us branded today. But, um, but I, you will see me, my, my people know here, like, um, I love you. I love your work. I wear it. I, uh, uh, use the journals and all the things I gift it. So if you haven't checked out her art, uh, please go to her webpage and we'll put all that in the show notes. Uh, but Gina, so I want to talk about, so delight, um, before I ask you how you specifically define it, I do want to go into how this is going to show up at the all of us restored retreats. And so if you haven't learned about the retreats, you can go to the webpage, allofus.net uh, backslash retreats. But on that page, you'll see that Delight, this entire in-person retreat will be curated around the five women that um, get selected to come. And so what's great about being small and what's great about um, having this in this way for all of us is that 
me and the other organizers will be able to really make this retreat around what you need as a participant. And so we know that like delight looks different for all of us. Like for what delights me could look different than what delights Gina. Uh, for me, I love to uh, eat pizza <laughs> and I love uh, the beach and I love to cuddle up with a good book. And, you know, I love spa stuff. So like delight looks different for me. Um, so at these retreats, we're going to engage um, using our different senses to restorative activities that make sense for you. And so that's what's so great about having just five of you because we can do that. And so with that, Gina, how do you define delight? And what are some ways that you delight? Yeah, so I mean, so anytime I'm like defining something, I always look it up. I'm like, I gotta look at the I know, me too. What, what it says, but then also try to like connect that to like what the Lord, like what does the Lord say about it? Yeah. Um, and how does that show up in my life? So, you know, the definition of delight is, you know, to have pleasure in something and to, you know, find joy or happiness in something. Um, I think for me, one thing that came to mind was um, operating in joy, like in joy, like whatever I do, you know, when you think about the word enjoy, to like E E N J O Y, yeah, um, it's to like, um, you know, have that pleasure in this thing. Yes. But the, what I'm kind of saying is I in joy, like yeah. in it being in joy with joy. something. And I so love it. Um, um, when I think about delight, that's kind of what I think of like enjoying something mm -hmm. and also being in joy while I do things. I and so that. um, that's how I would probably define it. It's, uh, and I think I, I find a lot of joy in kind of really understanding who I am in the Lord and mm -hmm. then just operating from that place, whether that is just like mothering my kids or <laughs> loving my husband or, yeah. um, you know, creating a home and environment that we live in mm -hmm. um, and doing it from a place of my identity and um, being confident in who I am and how that uniquely shows up in my life. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what I would say, I, how I might define it for myself. Yeah. Yeah, I love that in joy, but the I in instead of the E in. Yes. <laughs> have you found, because I have, and I'm curious for you, have you found that as you are um, in relationship with the Lord, <laughs> that delighting um, has maybe broadened for you or, or looked a little bit different than say it would when you um, maybe weren't as close to the Lord. Have you found mm -hmm. any differences in that? I know I have. Yeah. I think like, you know, what I've found is that, you know, Lord, the Lord tells us that in his presence, mm -hmm. there's joy. So like, I like, if he lives within us and as we go about our days, he's with us. Mm -hmm. then we're in his presence at all times. So we can walk through everything that we're in um, with confidence yeah. that we are in his presence and that in his presence, there is fullness of joy. And mm -hmm. so I think like really understanding that and believing that and having faith to believe that, you mm -hmm. know, reminds my heart that I can be in joy with everything that I'm doing. And yeah. in every way, you know, every piece and part of my life. And yeah. so I think, you know, before, before I had, you know, a relationship with the Lord, um, a lot of the happiness and joy, you know, really was based off of like what I was going through or how I was feeling. Yes. And I think um, one thing that I have learned is that um, I can decide that I will hold on and trust that he in his presence, there is joy, even when I'm not feeling it, even yeah. when things are not going the way that I want yeah. them to go, even when I'm doing something that seems very mundane that I don't want to be doing, mm -hmm. I can <laughs> really trust that like, okay, Lord, you're here. So like, yeah. let me, you know, experience your presence. Mm -hmm. And when I tap into that, I can experience peace and joy. And, yeah. you know, and, and so that's, yeah, yeah, that's what I would say about that. I, I 100% agree, like as my relationship with the Lord has strengthened and I have 
slowed in ways. Like I'm, I'm in a, you know, we, we can be in a busy season. We can be in a full season, but when we slow and we pause, I have found that his presence and delighting in um, nature or, you know, his word or, you know, it doesn't have to cost me any money, which is great. Yes, I want to right. say that to people. It's like, yeah, I delight in the spa and I delight in all these things, right? I love those things. <laughs> But the the delight that doesn't cost any money um, mm -hmm. is you can delight in the Lord and slow down to see his presence in nature. That's why we're going to be talking, you know, like the, the, with using the senses that he's given us, right? Like, you know, yes. feel, taste, touch, you know, like seeing it, it. You have to be to be aware of those senses. You have to be yes. present in, in the experience and you have to slow uh, mm. to be able to taste the food and not just scarf it down. Like, you know, yep. like we all are guilty of, right? Yes. But it's different whenever we're like, you know, so hungry and like just just getting the food in is versus sitting at the table. Mm. Oh, right. Like literally <laughs> tasting our food and enjoying the company that's at the table. Mm. And, you know, that takes a slower posture. Um, but in everything, I believe that we can delight because it's, you know, the word tells us that every good and perfect thing is from the Lord. Yes. And there's so much that we miss, you know, in our normal yes. lives when we don't slow and see the delight in all the things. So yeah, yes. thank you for sharing. So Gina, you have written this amazing book <laughs> that <laughs> comes out um, on August 20th. So when you all see this, I'm going to drop this on the day of your of your book coming out. Yay! Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We're, just, we're gonna just fast forward this thing. Uh, so, yay! Your book is out. Right. <laughs> yay! It came out today. Right. It came out today. Uh, we are so excited that this day is here. <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, it was quite an honor, uh, and I, Gina, asked me to say a few words to endorse sacred creativity, and I got to tell y'all, it has been one of my biggest like honors that I have ever been asked to like it's it's, it's been an honor uh, for someone to say hey I want you to say a few words about this piece of this gift this writing that God has given me um it, it meant the world and I got to read the book in advance and actually I was on a plane to Minnesota uh when I was reading right. Reading the book, um, but it is good, y'all. And I don't say that just because I love Gina. I do. Uh, but I really, truly believe that sacred creativity um, is going to allow you to um, recognize the goodness and faithfulness of the Lord and, and really sit with how he has planted all this goodness inside of you because you were made by him. Yes. And then it's going to encourage you to bring that out into the world. And so Gina, will you tell us a little bit about why did you decide to write sacred creativity and what can the reader look forward to when they open up that thing on August 20th? Yeah, so um, when I, you know, sat down to start writing this book, um, I knew that I needed to share pieces of my story. Um, so many people can see, you know, parts of your story and chapters of your story, and they think, oh, this happened overnight, or how did you do this, or, um, you know, that it was by grit and hustle, and it, my story truly was by trusting the Lord with what he gave me. Yeah. And um, it, it, the way that I would encourage, you know, people that would ask me and creatives and different ones that would say, you know, how do you do this? I'm just like, you know, it would all go back to, you know, what, what's your relationship like with the Lord, you know? And also, you know, what do you believe about yourself? Like who, you know, what do you believe about who he created you to be? Um, and so, um, as someone who always loved to make and create from such a young age, Mm -hmm. I actually kind of w went away from a lot of the art and creativity um, until I was about to be a mom. So I, you know, grew up in a very creative home. Um, I, my dad was a minister. I grew up in, you know, a faith-based home. And um, I, it wasn't until I was like in my mid twenties that I really um, started to have a, my own personal relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. At that same time, I was in a transition of um, about to become a mother. And so it was like this new relationship with this God that I had always known about, but I'd never really experienced on my own. Um, and as I began to just trust him and walk with him, um, 
uniquely in just getting to know him. I tried to put away a lot of things that I learned from religion and just really get to know who this guy was. Yeah, yeah. Um, as I did that, one of the ways that I believe he really helped me to heal from a lot of you know, religious things within my past and also to trust him and know him was by asking me who I was and starting to really help me to unravel and unwrap who he made me to be and who he created me to be. Mm. Uh, and so this book is really a love letter to women that know there is something within them. And maybe it's something that they've walked forward in. Maybe it's something they've sat down. Maybe it's something they've never picked up. But for them to really understand and know that God created you <laughs> and made you unique and he's placed things within you that only you can bring forth in the way that you do. Mm. And he loves you so much yeah. that he's given it to you and it's a gift mm. and that you get to operate and open it. Mm. And you know, for, in my story, it was, you know, creativity and art, but in, in, you know, everyone's story, um, creativity shows up in so many different ways. I think so many yeah. of us <laughs> just believe. I'm glad you're saying in, that because that yeah. was my next question was because people are like, well, I'm not a creative or illustrator like Gina. So does this even apply to me? So yes, please. Yes. <laughs> yes. So like creativity, um, I think we think of creativity and we immediately put it in um, a box. You know, mm -hmm. we put a lot of things in boxes, but we oh, do man. this with that. We say, oh, this is art. You know, that's something. I may have done before. I don't think I'm really good at it. You know, we do that. But creativity is a gift that God has given us. And it was one of the first things that the Lord did. When we look back in Genesis, um, that's the first thing he did was create. Okay. Yeah. He yeah. also made us in his image. Mm -hmm. And then one of the first things he asked Adam to do is to create names for <laughs> the animals that were on yeah. the land okay so immediately he gifted him this and told him to use it yeah. right off the bat he told him to use it yeah. um and i think we sometimes just assume that it's art and and you know it's painting and it's you know these things but it shows up in our problem solving it shows mm -hmm. up in, in our um, hospitality the way that we are hospitable to others it shows up in the way that we come up with solutions for things it shows up I mean, everything that we touch came from an idea <laughs> from someone. It was made into fruition. Mm -hmm. So I think we um, discount it or, you know, put it in boxes, but it's so important to us. So I think like, you know, if I would say anyone that, you know, wants to read this that doesn't consider themselves creative, there's a lot of encouragement for you in this of just looking at what God's placed in your hands and using what you have in whatever way that looks like. Mm -hmm. With him, you know, that's the big part of this book is just walk in it with him. So good. Oh, so good. Gina, you just made me think about, um, as I'm like going back to when I was reading your book, um, outside of taste, you hit all of the senses um, by engaging with your book. So what I mean by that for the listener is there are places that you are going to be able to write. Um, so journal. There are places in, in sacred creativity where you're going to be viewing with your eyes beautiful illustrations by Gina. There are going to be places, and this is one of my favorite parts, um, <laughs> is you have uh, different songs that you can engage with and uh, listen to. And so you're hearing. And so I just wanted to mention that, like, you really take us on this journey of like, unpacking, you know, like yes. unpacking the gifts, seeing the gifts, but using these different senses allows us, in my opinion, to really be able to see more clearly and, and see, um, what God has put into us a little bit more clearly. Um, was that your, I mean, this is kind of like an insider question. So all of us, uh, family, <laughs> but, uh, Gina, was that like your vision, you know, from the beginning, is that something that the, um, your editor and the publisher were like, Hey, you should do this different. Like, why would you include all these kind of differences in your book that really makes it unique to maybe some of the other books that we read? Yeah, so I it was definitely a collaborative idea um, because I've always I've always dreamed of making a creative journal, and actually yeah. that is something that's coming next year. So Yay! keep your eyes open for that. <laughs> <laughs> so there will be a lot more of that. That'll be a full okay. book with, with, oh, you know, so good. and that kind of stuff. 
Um, but it's always been a dream of mine to do that because I think a lot of times we um, we desire to do this thing, but we don't know how to start. We don't know where to start. And yeah. a lot of times it starts with asking the questions, with sitting, with things, and with just exploring. Yeah. Um, and so I really wanted, you know, after every section of the book for us to sit, mm. to like really sit, to yeah. affirm. So another thing that's in those sections are affirmations, you know, yeah. affirmations of that. things that we need to believe. And mm. so we affirm ourselves and then we do, you know, some reflective work before we move on. Mm. Um, so that's, I just think it's really important and I'm glad that like, yeah. that, you know, as a team, we came up with the, what to, how to do that. Yeah. Um, but I think right. I'm just so glad that we did it. I'm so glad that it's in there. <laughs> yeah, same with me Same. yeah, I'm glad you included it as well. Uh, well in there's your book, there's six different like sections to your book. And yeah. under one of the sections, there's a chapter called create to create. Is that right? I think I got that yes. right. Yep. Um, and so I couldn't help but think about, you know, the all of us delight and, um, you know, this tenant of the new all of us restored retreats, uh, Gina, like create to create, talk to us a little bit about that because I can see like for you, at least like you're an illustrator, you enjoy like what you do, but it's also your job and it's also right. the giftings that God has planted in you. So talk to us about that chapter and then like, how do you draw the line there? Like if you really, I mean, if it's something that God's gifted you with, it's, we pretty much, I think we all enjoy the, those things once we actually figure out what they are. So what's sure. the line there um, when you're creating to create? Yeah, I think that, you know, that chapter was really um, a focus on, you know, I think a lot of times we put pressure on ourselves when we're trying to make and, and do things. And it was, really um, an encouragement that you don't have to even have um, some mapped out plan of why to use your gifts and why to walk in them. Just do it for the sake of it's a gift that was given to you and it shouldn't sit on a shelf. It should be yeah. yours. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, um, you know, for me, because like you said, I work and create, that's like part of my job. And that's also like what I love to do and what connects me to the father and like what you know, it's really just a part of my heart. Um, and I think sometimes that line can be blurred when I um, take on a lot of work or if I'm just like, you know, heavy in one side, then it's really hard for me to <laughs> be able to like balance it with the other side. But I've learned that, um, and I, I have a chapter on this in my book as well, but I've learned that making space is really important. <laughs> I think a lot of times we don't make space. We don't make to. space. Yeah. Um, we don't, you know, we are at the next place before, you know, we're even there. Our minds are there, you know, somewhere else before we've been there. And I think uh, what I learned is that I really had to make space to take the time to just use my gift yeah. um, and create for the sake of creating. And that wasn't easy, you know, as a mom, as a business owner, as a wife, you know, um, as a friend, a daughter, all of these things, you know, all these titles and things that we wear, all these hats we wear. Um, but I had to really look at my priorities and also align my life to what I believed. You know, I wanted to have a life that, you know, was flexible with my job, my work. I wanted to have a life where I was, you know, using the gifts that God had given me and doing it in a way that we could sit together and I could worship and do this thing. And so I had to make time for it. And that was a really, that was a hard thing. I, a lesson I had to learn over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but that's how I kind of found the balance there. And I think sometimes it's still, you know, like it still happens. And mm -hmm. then I have to be like, no, like I have to sit. And we're back. Yeah. Like, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. No. And, and, and thank you for sharing. And I think that, you know, you said something uh, that we need to hold on to is you got to make the space. It's like, and you yeah. got to define what that space is going to look like. It's like, no, I am um, illustrating right now, but this is just for delight. This is not for, you know, um, any goal that I have to meet for my job. Like, this is just me, God being with you and using the gifting that you've given me to rest and delight in what, you know, in craft yes. or drawing or whatever you're deciding to do. I found that it's very hard for me as well. And I want to add this because I know we have a lot of different ministry leaders that are a part of all of us. And for my vocation, 
Uh, currently I'm in seminary and I had to learn that my time studying in school, even though I am going over the Bible um, and I'm studying the Bible or even when I'm crafting a sermon, right. And I'm writing a sermon or I'm writing a devotional piece for somebody like all of those things are beautiful things. And God has gifted me to do them. And they're also my job. And yes. so I still am in need, even though I'm in the word in those ways, I still have to set aside time to be with the Lord and be with the Lord in his word and not have to produce something from it. Yes. And I think that A, nobody warned me of that. And, <laughs> and B, it is something that obviously like, it's good that I'm in the word, but it is right. different when I'm just with him and I'm saying, Lord, you know, it's just me and you right now. You know, like, would you illuminate the pages of this scripture and would you allow me to see more of you and it just be a me and him thing versus yes. you know, like I need to create a devotional right now for this entity, you know, yes. so I wanted to say that and share my experience alongside Gina to tell you that no matter what vocation, no matter what assignment, even when you love that assignment and love the giftings that God has given you that there's going to be times that you will need to just use that gifting to where you're with him and only, yes. him. and then there'll be times where you will produce and, you know, do all those things. So yes, I time. love that. i like, it's cool because I feel like when I get to that place where I'm like, you know, the lines are very blurred. The Lord really just reminds <laughs> me, come sit with me. I know. I know. Not even like, a, like, <laughs> come on, like, put that down. Come sit with me. Yeah. Like, let's just have time together. And when I can really immerse myself in just being in his presence, mm -hmm. you know, even, sometimes, sometimes work comes, comes through it, but sometimes it's just our time, you know? Yeah. And um, sometimes I, he'll give me ideas. Sometimes it's just, us and there's yeah. nothing he just wants to know what's on my heart and so yeah. um, oh, that's oh, super yeah. important mm -hmm. yeah. i agree i agree <laughs> well gina we're gonna wrap up today but i do want to um ask you to give some encouragement and let me set it up and tee it up this way so all of us restored Every single retreat that we do, um, the first one being March 27th through 29th, um, 2025, uh, here in California. Uh, that first retreat is going to be centered and solely for Black women. And so every retreat will look different. I, there will be a different topic, ever, a different pot of women that, you know, will be allowed to submit applications for All of Us Restored. But this one, uh, I went through several different, uh, what should be first, Lord, what should be first? And it was became very clear that this one needed to be for us. And because you are a Black woman, I would love for you to encourage uh, the All of Us family that um, are Black, <laughs> Black women, uh, as we think about delight and as we think about all of us restored coming up in spring, what encouragement would you give to the black women who are maybe thinking about, um, submitting an application for all of us restored and, um, the importance of them coming to a retreat where they can rest and delight, connect and grow? Yeah. So I think, you know, I would say that it's really important, you know, for our, health and our wellness that we be well yes so that amen. we can do um what the lord has us to do but then also just be who he created us to be mm -hmm. so um you know i think that's really hard a lot of times for women in general but you know specifically for black women um there's a lot of things that we carry there's a lot of things that um you know we have been through a lot of things that we experienced that um, we don't often have safe spaces yeah. for us to just be, okay? Yeah. So this yeah. is an encouragement, you know, for those women that are considering this to, to you know, apply so that you can have a space to just be, right? Yeah. Where you can be in a space where others can understand things that you don't, you know, necessarily even have to try to explain. You can just be. <laughs> um, and there's something in that I think that is really healing for us. And I think also um, it's something that the Lord really wants for us. Like, I yeah. think we have to believe that he really wants this for us. Um, and I, and I truly believe that because I, there are so many things within, um, you know, the body that are happening to restore, right? To restore um, and to, you know, allow healing because there has been a lot done to us. Um, and the enemy 
he thought, right? He thought, but God is bringing restoration and healing to us. And so I would just encourage you to apply, um, to know that that's the heart of the father. He loves to give, give his children good gifts. Mm-hmm. This is a good gift he wants to give you. And so I would just encourage you to apply. Absolutely. Mm, thank you, Gina. And that's just it. You know, you can go to the All of Us website um, if you are a Black woman to apply and we would love to have you and uh, the All of Us Patreon family will look through those applications and we'll pray and we'll seek God on who this retreat needs to be for for the very first time. And then for everybody else, we pray, you know, and we give, you know, all of us restore the really cool thing about it, no matter what retreat we do is that the participants will not have to pay their way. So it will take all of us together to send these women to rest. And as we partner with God and we partner together, you know, we can get this done. We can send women to rest. We don't want it to be a barrier, uh, finances to be a barrier for anybody to be able to rest. And so lofty goals, but girl, we are going after it here, Gina. Yes. And we're just believing that um, we can we can be a part of the restoration and the redemption that God is doing all over this world, even when sometimes it doesn't, we don't see it or doesn't feel like it, we can rest assured knowing that our father is doing it and we are a part of it here at all of us. So uh, thank you for those that decide to give. Thank you to the women that are going to apply. Gina, thank you for being with us again here at all of us. And we wish you well, of course, and congratulations on sacred creativity (laughs) and uh, all of us family. We'll see you next time. Take care.